in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. Today, Rick Doan from Interfaith Social Services joins us to chat about their upcoming Stop the Stigma 5K road race. We're going to play a little trivia with you today as well. First, though, we take a look at the weather and the news. Currently in Quincy, still have uh, some rainy conditions out there. Windswept rain at 62 degrees right now, but the showers should be coming to an end later this afternoon. The clouds will stick around. It'll still be windy, but it'll be warm. Temperatures will remain in the lower 60s throughout the afternoon. Clearing this evening, lows drop off into the upper 40s and a better weekend. Breezy tomorrow, some clouds around, but pretty mild with highs into the mid 50s. Maybe a spot shower Sunday afternoon. Very pleasant though with highs into the low 60s and Patriots Day Marathon Monday looks great for the spectators. Sunshine and clouds with highs in the low 60s might be a little warm for the runners and it should stay dry into the first half of next week. Right now though we've got windy rainy conditions 62 degrees in Quincy. Checking out the news for you today. Lunar New Year will not be a holiday in the Quincy Public Schools next year. School committee this week voted four to two to accept next year's school calendar as written by a subcommittee, which does not include the Lunar New Year holiday. Advocates for a Lunar New Year holiday, school holiday, said it would allow the large number of Asian students in the school system to celebrate with their families. However, opponents pointed out that it's not a state or a federal holiday, which means not all families would have a day off. School committee woman Courtney Perdios favors the Lunar New Year holiday and urged her colleagues to continue discussions on the matter. 15 months now that this uh, body has not convened the EDI subcommittee and it really does feel like we're struggling to understand, we as body are struggling to understand how best to um, support diversity while also not ignoring all the minorities. I don't think ignoring all of our other cultures officially in our school calendar does anyone any good. So it feels to me like having a larger discussion in the EDI subcommittee um, would be uh, something that I would support. Um, I know Ms. Cahill is the chair, Mr. Bergoli and Mr. Gutro are uh, the members on that. I know that it's up to the three of them to convene that meeting. Um, I would urge the three of you to, uh, to set a date and we can meet and discuss maybe some, you know, factors that would go into creating what would be a holiday for us, whether it should be, as Mrs. Lebo said, whether we base it on federal. Um, I know that the people who are uh, setting up and organizing the Holy Festival, they actually support having Lunar New Year off. So I don't think that just because one culture, you're not one culture, it doesn't mean you don't support another. So um, I think that this is probably a larger conversation that we should have, um, and that's probably why we have an EDI subcommittee. Um, so I would just encourage us to do that. Other members worried about setting a precedence that would require more holidays for ethnic or religious celebrations. Member Doug Gutro said he intends to introduce a measure that would remove Good Friday as a school holiday. Students requesting a day off for Lunar New Year or several other religious or cultural holidays are eligible for an excused absence in Quincy. National Grid customers in Quincy will soon be receiving a letter explaining a new electricity program. The city has entered into an agreement with Dynagy Energy Corporation, which is based in Houston, Texas, to supply electricity under a program called Municipal Aggregation. Mayor Thomas Koch explains that it allows the city to purchase electricity in bulk and then offer it to customers at a reduced rate. Do what they call aggregation and that is for the city as a whole um, to take everybody's uh, electric bills and put them to one location. Uh, it doesn't change the billing process, as I understand it, with National Grid, but it changes the source. Mm -hmm. But the goal is, and what the reality is, is that it will lower people's bills uh, by doing this. Now, people have the option to opt out um, if they don't want to be part of it, but uh, I think it's a great great way to save some people a few bucks um certainly as we've seen the electric uh, bills go up and up and up particularly during the winter months so um so we negotiate um obviously the where we buy the electricity national grid still is the company that transmits the power to the homes mm -hmm. so that bill stays the same but it's the actual uh, purchasing of the power 
that people will save on by, by doing this. The Quincy Electricity Program will offer three services, the lowest rate at 13.3 cents per kilowatt hour, the next lowest at 13.8 cents, and then 14.7 cents per kilowatt hour. All three are lower than National Grid's basic service rate now of 18.2 cents. Now the program begins in June. Customers may opt out at any time with no penalty. The rates are guaranteed through December of 2027. A community meeting about this new plan will be held April 23rd at 6 p.m. at the Kennedy Center. Part of the $24 million capital improvement plan that was approved by the Quincy City Council Finance Committee this week includes funding to remove the few lead water service lines that remain in the city. Quincy DPW Commissioner Al Grazioso says they'll be targeting any lead line pipes that lead from the city water mains to private homes and businesses. We have almost 24,000 water services and the vast majority contain no lead. There are less than 3% that have a suspicion of lead on the private property side. Uh, we do not have records for what water service materials there are. The lead pipe removal program that you'll hear about tonight relates to identifying water services that do not have records and removing water pipes on private property which may have lead components. Grazioso said there may also be some private properties that have lead solder in plumbing fixtures inside homes and businesses. That would be up to the property owners to address. The full city council is expected to approve the funding for that program soon. It is going to cost an extra $6 million to build the new Quincy Animal Shelter. This week, Quincy Public Buildings Commissioner Paul Hines told the City Council that the increased cost is due to the discovery of asbestos at the site off of Quarry Street that had to be removed, causing a year-long delay in the project. That effort took almost to the day one full year. So obviously there was cost associated with that effort um, to get us back to a clean building site and out of the, uh, the crosshairs of the DEP. Um, and so we had the expenses of that, but at the same time we had the expenses of the trailers were on site, the materials that needed to be purchased escalated in cost, the materials that had been purchased had to be stored at whatever vendor they had at a significant charge to us. The general contractor's overhead and uh, general conditions continued. Our architect cost us more, our OPM cost us more. Um, everything it just you know, triggered this whole sl slippery slope of uh, added expenses. And one of the other significant portions of it is with the, the ticking of the one calendar year, the prevailing wage rates, which were mandated to pay as a government entity under the statutes uh, increased. So our wages across the board for every tradesperson increased as well. The extra $6 million was the largest item included in a $20 million bond request that was approved by the City Council Finance Committee. The City Council previously approved $17 million for the new shelter, bringing the total cost of the new animal shelter now to $23 million. There is a new sergeant on the Quincy Police Department. Officer John J. Grazioso was promoted during a ceremony Monday in the Great Hall at Quincy City Hall. Quincy Police Chief Mark Kennedy said it took some prodding to get Grazioso to leave his former assignments. Um, I could say that out of all the SOU guys, with the exception of Matt Hockney, uh, Jay probably loves riding the motorcycle the most. Uh, so I know this isn't... Um, this was a, it was a tough sell, but he put in the work. I know during the, the summer he was going on vacation and I sent him a text kind of ribbing him a bit that, you know, Bill Belichick, we don't take days off. And within about 20 seconds, he sent me a picture from the airplane of uh, him reading criminal law. And there may have been uh, a screwdriver on the, uh, the <laughs> table in front of him, but he was studying criminal law at the time. So that was pretty cool. And then I knew then that was in June. I said, he's locked in. Uh, so Jay, congratulations. And uh, I know you're doing it for your family and uh, you're doing it for this department and the city. So uh, on behalf of the city, thank you. And thank you, Sam and, and Jack and Riley and uh, Brooke uh, for supporting your dad through this and your husband. And we know we couldn't do it without our family. It's 
not easy to get promoted in this department. So this is a uh, pretty cool day and uh, very proud to be here. So thank you all. Mayor Thomas Koch said Grazioso has been a Quincy police officer for 18 years. Koch says the promotion opens up some new patrol officer positions that will be filled later this year. Well, finally today, students at Quincy's Atlantic Middle School will be able to stay in shape with their new Anchor Fit Zone. The state-of-the-art fitness room was unveiled recently through a collaboration between the Boston Celtics and Boston Scientific in their annual Fit for a Cause program. Now, the Anchor Fit Zone was funded by a $50,000 grant to provide students with the facility to focus on their physical well-being. Atlantic students won the grant by outperforming other area schools in a series of virtual fitness challenges. During the unveiling of the new center recently, students got the chance to shoot some hoops with Boston Celtics legend Brian Scalabrini and Celtics mascot Lucky and his flight crew showing off some freestyle dunks. Students also participated in some physical challenges and earned some rewards too, including autographed basketballs. Representatives from the Celtics and the Boston Scientific joined Quincy school officials during that event. That is our check of news for you today. Coming up, Rick Doan from Interfaith Social Services sits down with us next. Welcome back. Rick Doan from Interfaith Social Services is here. So that must mean that the Stop the Stigma 5K road race is coming up very soon, Rick. It sure is. A couple <laughs> weeks. Yeah. Uh, actually, two weeks from tomorrow, right? That's right. Yeah. April 27th. Okay. Yeah. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for coming. I'm great. Over. Always good to see you. Great to have you, as always. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned earlier we're going to play a little trivia with folks, so they should uh, test their brain cells a now. A little <laughs> trivia, well, because we're celebrating it's a big year. Yes. The, this is our 50th. Uh, 5K, our 50th anniversary of it. So, you know, you got to have a little trivia from 1974. Absolutely, sure. Yeah. Uh, not it wasn't called Stop the Stigma 50 years ago, right? No, no, it was the. Well, I mean, it's had different iterations over 50 years. Right. It's grown, but the year that it started, 1974, was a really big year for our, our organization. That was the year when we opened the food pantry. Oh, okay. And that was the year when the food pantry opened and funding was a little tight. The organization said, we need to do more to support this. We need a fundraiser. So that's when our thrift shop opened as well. Oh, all right. So our thrift shop and our 5K and the, the food pantry all started the same year. Okay, so this um, is a landmark year for them. For uh, you. Well, it's, it's, I didn't even know it until I was reading a book recently about food pantries. We were actually one of the first in the nation. Is that right? Here in Quincy. Wow. In the nation? In the nation. Wow. That the first food pantry in the whole United States only opened in 1969. Hmm. And so it was Where a very, was no it was in Arizona. Oh, okay. And it was a very novel idea. And by 1976, there were only 18 food pantries in the United States. And so Quincy was one of the first ones. Interesting. So, I mean, at that time, it was uh, Protestant Social Service Bureau. We were. It was yeah. Protestant Social Service Bureau, and that's what the, the walk-a-thon was yes. for a long time. And it moved around to different communities, and it was up to 10 miles. Wow. Lots of people remember that, I would not say with fondness, <laughs> but they remember when it used to be 10 miles. Yeah. And uh, then it became the South Shore Walk. Right. Yep. And then we rebranded as the Stop the Stigma 5K several years ago. And all the funds now support our mental health counseling center. Okay. Did, did the funds originally support? Because I know Interfaith has had mental health counseling from its inception. Right? Yeah, it's our oldest program. Right. Yeah. I mean, the funds used to just support all of our programs. In general, okay. Yeah. So it was like we would have this walk-a-thon, we'd have the South Shore Walk. The, this event every year would just be funding for the organization. Okay. Um, but about eight or nine years ago, we said, you know, we're gonna, uh, we need more support for our counseling center, and we want, want to raise more awareness. Yes. And so this isn't more than just a fundraiser. It, well, it, it, exactly. It's to change the, uh, the conversation about mental health, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's to help people understand that they shouldn't feel ashamed to talk about mental illness. Right. They shouldn't feel ashamed to talk about addiction, that these are not character flaws. They are part of who we are, mm -hmm. and people should feel comfortable talking about them like any other illness. Yeah. Has the stigma stopped in your view, oh, no. Rick? No. It hasn't stopped, but really? we're definitely better. Okay. And uh, interestingly, the 
the one of the biggest factors that's moved everything. Uh, it it was the 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 um, pandemic. Is that right? That during the pandemic, more people were talking about this. You had more celebrities mm. opening up about their own struggles with anxiety, yes. depression, addiction, and when you know people like Ben Affleck talk about it, everyone goes, "Oh, okay, maybe well, this is this isn't the this is just part of who Some we are." Some high-profile people, yeah. you put a put a name to it, and uh, pe folks can identify and, yeah. and say, "Oh, if if they can talk about it in public, you know, maybe I can too." Well, it takes courage. Yeah, it takes courage to stand up, yeah. but it shouldn't. You know, ideally, we should live in a society where you shouldn't have to be courageous mm. to talk about mental illness. Nobody, when somebody talks about breaking their leg, you don't call them courageous right. for talking about <laughs> breaking their leg. Right. Um, no, and, you and sign their cast, usually. Exactly. <laughs> and that's what it should be. And that's yeah. what this 5K is. It's the community coming back together to sign people's cast. Yes, there you go. To say, we support you, we love you, this is part of who you are, and we support you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about exactly what's going to be happening on that day. Sure. It's April 27th. They're still at the Kennedy Center, right? At the Kennedy okay. Center. The route goes up and around Squantum and back to the Kennedy Center. Um, it's a fun day. Mm -hmm. We're expecting about 800 participants. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that really is. Yeah, so it's, it's higher than last year. Each year we keep setting more, more records. Um, this year, um, Granite Links actually just started a food truck. Really? And they're sending it down. It's going to be one of the first events the food truck is at. Oh. So people can purchase breakfast sandwiches and, and other, you know, some of the delicious food from Granite Links. Mm -hmm. They're a great supporter of ours, so we love Well, I know you have your Feed that. the Hungry Gala there every year, so yeah, okay. You know, but it's, it's the sponsors that keep it going. Yeah. Um, we have our Bell Insurance has been sponsoring this event and many of our programs at Interfaith for over two decades. And then Wolfpack Charitable, they're the lead anniversary sponsors oh, this year. Okay. And then Summit Solar, Summit Energy, and um, Heritage Companies. Okay. Really great, great supporters. Heritage is actually doing a golf tournament for Interfaith in May. It's sold out, hmm. so nobody should go to the website. <laughs> okay. um, but, uh, and, and Summit Solar, Summit Energy, gave Interfaith a whole solar system. Oh, right. They're saving that. us over yes. $1,000 a month on electricity yeah, amazing yeah. and they're sponsoring the 5k and sending a team to participate it's fantastic yeah, yeah. so we're grateful for all of our sponsors um still time to sign up always okay. definitely time to sign up but the t-shirt deadline is passed uh wow so, wah, wah, so wah. joe okay. i know you're <laughs> sad you missed the t-shirt deadline but um people can still go on and register okay. they just won't get a t-shirt um we do shut down registration the day or so before the event all right um so if somebody went the night of or the morning of they have waited too long oh really okay. look at the forecast on that monday <laughs> next monday <laughs> okay make your final decision and even if it's going to rain that's even an additional motivation to make a donation maybe don't register but make a donation because right. we need it well you can always donate regardless always, right always interfaith social yeah um is the event rain or shine seeing as you brought it up it's, it's rain or shine yes. yeah um we actually it was the only year that it was up in the air was the week after the marathon bombing ah uh, right yep. where we were one of the first events mm -hmm. after and we were talking with the quincy police department is this going to happen should we shut it down and um, it really ended up being where they caught him and, and, you know, it ended up being a very cathartic event. Really? Because people could come together after. I mean, it was, if you remember those oh, couple days yeah. afterwards. Sure. Um, well, it, actually, they didn't come to a conclusion until that Thursday, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and then we had the, the, the 5K on Saturday. Saturday, yeah. Um, and it's just, it just shows how long this event has been around. Yes. That yeah. we've, we have those memories. We have people that have been doing this event longer than I've been alive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. You don't have to run, right? No, you can walk. Yes. Absolutely walk. Yeah, it's a, stro it's a stroll. You can do a stroll. You can stroll. You can bring your pets. Yes. You can bring your strollers. We have a stroller drop-off. Oh, all right. So people can drop off the kiddos and the stroller, yep. and then they, tr they go down and park at Marina Bay. Okay. And then we have shuttle buses that bring everybody down to the Kennedy Center. Okay, very good. What time's registration that morning? Uh, 9. 9 a.m., okay. A.m. You think? I th <laughs> it's earlier. We start at 8.30. Okay. Um, so we start earlier. Um, kickoff is at 9.30. Oh, all right. Um, so, yeah. 
It's on the website. Okay. You got me, Joe. <laughs> that was a really tough question, Rick. Exactly what, what time? What time? <laughs> Go to the website. All the information is on the website. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's a 5K, so it's a little over three miles. So it is. it's very doable, right? And it is. For most folks, you don't need to be an athlete. Well, you don't, ha you don't have to be an athlete. No. But we hear from runners that it is a challenging course. Hmm, okay. Um, which, you know. Well, Squantum is hillier than you might think. You know, you it, think a coastal community, it's going to be flat, sandy. No, there's some, some pretty good hills. It's practically an island. Yes. If it weren't hilly, it wouldn't be there. That's right. There would be no Squantum. It would be underwater. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, what does the event um, actually do for the New Directions Counseling Center? So uh, the Counseling Center is seeing more clients than okay. ever, as most counseling, counseling centers are. Um, and so these funds support people here in Quincy and throughout the South Shore who need help, who otherwise couldn't afford mental health treatment. Uh, also, sometimes people are underinsured where they have insurance, but the copay is extremely high. Yes. Or the deductible is extremely high. Yep. Um, so we offer a sliding fee scale based on income okay. so people can access the help. And we actually offer the first four sessions for free. That's fantastic. When people reach out. Yep break down those financial barriers. So that's what this funding is doing. Okay. How much does it typically raise, Rick? Uh, we're, we're anticipating raising about $150,000 okay. this year. That's our goal. That's great. We're not quite there yet. Okay. So that's why we need everybody watching yep. and listening Sign up, to donate. go register and donate to get us to that $150,000 goal. Absolutely. Um, the counseling center itself costs three times that to operate per year. Um, so this is one of the fundraising endeavors okay. that we have for the counseling center. Let's play a little game. Yeah, let's do it. Let's uh, set the Wayback Machine okay. 50 years to 1974. 1974. Picture it. Pa you know, you got, <laughs> you got uh, some amazing shopping in downtown Quincy. Yes. You got some Howard Johnsons <laughs> still around. Yes. Uh, but we're doing a little bit of trivia this year. Okay. So, Joe, what movie won for best picture in 1974? Oh, boy. Was it The Sting? The Godfather, or I think let's go those two. What do you think? One of those two. Yeah. Okay. I think it's The Godfather. Could be. <laughs> oh, but I don't American know. Graffiti. That was a three. Yeah, I don't think it would have been that one. But I, I could don't be know because that was 1974. <laughs> yep. That was George Lucas's movie right before he did before Star, Star Wars. Before Star Wars, that's true. Yeah. And that was like 1978. So was it could have been American Graffiti. All right. But people are going to have to come down and find out. I was just going to ask, how do we find out? And okay. Come down to the Kennedy Center. Um, also, one more piece of trivia. Yes. Can't have just one. What fruity snack came out in 1974? <laughs> okay. Popular today. Yes. But it debuted in 1974. Okay. Chewy fruity snack. A chewy fruity and not going to give. It's not a multiple choice. No. Okay. They'll have to come down and find out. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we also have other, just little fun signs talking about like prices, right? Like what, how much did this postage stamp cost? Oh, ah, okay. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's looking back, it's remembering, it's important. Yeah. Quincy is full of history. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. And 50 years ago might not sound that long ago to many people. Um, but this is one of the things that 50 years later, the stigma has gotten better mm -hmm. in overcoming it, mm -hmm. but it's still there. And uh, 50 years from now, hopefully, uh, it'll be a much different situation. Right. So the answers are going to be at the race? They'll be there. Race day? We already got the signs printed. Okay. <laughs> okay. They're so. very colorful. <laughs> All right. If, if folks can't go, will you put them up on your website afterwards? Yeah, we will. That's okay. a good idea. Yeah. That's a good idea. Maybe we'll put them in, the, in our press release in the Quincy Sun. There you go. Okay. okay. Uh, I know you always like to mention your volunteers, so we should not uh, neglect that. Well, on a day like today, yep. when it's pouring rain out and our, the line of clients is down the street waiting for our food pantry. Yeah. And our volunteers are out there in the rain, in the wind. They're amazing people. And th many of them are from Quincy, mm -hmm. and they might be watching. And so any chance we have to say thank you to the, our volunteers, we're going to do it. Sure. And uh, encourage people to volunteer as well. We're always looking for volunteers. Not every day okay. is raining and windy. <laughs> okay. um, but it's uh, amazing people coming together to help their community. Sure. And I always like to give you the opportunity, Rick, to uh, put out any special requests that you may need uh, at Interfaith. Well, I mean, donations. Okay. Uh, our homelessness prevention program is, uh, we've had to practically double that budget. Hmm. Uh, it's, it's increased significantly over the last two years. And uh, if people are looking to donate product, we always need kids' books. Oh, Last okay. year, we gave out 16,000 kids' books through our food pantry wow. and uh, all types of hygiene supplies. 
especially diaper sizes five and six. Okay. All right. That can be a financial struggle for some folks, for sure, oh, some yes, of those items. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and, of course, food donations, too, right? Always. Yeah. Always food donations. But, you know, we really encourage diapers, feminine hygiene products. Those are the things that are a little more difficult for us to source. Okay. Um, but, yeah, we welcome all types of donations. And we have an amazing thrift shop. And people should come down and donate and support it and check out our eBay store for the thrift shop. Oh, no kidding. Oh, all yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. And I always ask you, are you adorned in your uh, this thrift shop somebody clothing? Somebody printed this, but my <laughs> shirt, my <laughs> pants, my shoes, everything came from the bureau drawer. They get the best stuff around. Thanks so much, Rick. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see how I did with those trivia questions. I know. Well, if only we could Google it. <laughs> if only. For anybody at home who can't go, best picture in 1974. You can look it up. All right. Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you, too. Just enough time to check the forecast for you for the rest of the day today. Uh, the rain should be coming to an end this afternoon. The clouds will stick around. It's still windy, but it's warm. It's in the low 60s, uh, down to the lower 40s this evening under clearing skies. Tomorrow, I think the clouds will win out in the afternoon. Still kind of breezy, mid-50s. Not bad on Sunday. Maybe a spot afternoon shower. And then a marathon Monday on um, Patriot's Day looks great, partly sunny, and in the low 60s. Thanks again to Rick Doan for joining us from Inter faith social services thank you to our crew thank you for watching speaking of monday we're off for a patriots day so join us next friday folks from maria dross counseling services will be stopping by to talk about their upcoming fundraiser as well meantime you can head to our website it's qatv.org all of our latest programs are there there's news information video on demand live streaming and much more for all of us here at qatv i'm joe catalano have a great weekend